Hello boys and girls, today you are going to begin working on your animal sloshing mask. Now remember, we're creating these masks in an abstract style. That means they do not have to look exactly like real life. You could make them uh, blend in to real life or you can make them bright and colorful. I really recommend going for the second, making them bright and colorful. The first thing you're going to do after you've picked your animal is write your name on your paper and uh, on the edge with the pencil. Then you're going to put the pencil away. You don't need it anymore because today we're going to be using crayon. Now, before you get started, I want you to think about what colors you would like to use. Now, I have a lot of different colors sitting on my table, and I know hippos are normally gray. So I'm gonna think about what colors they are in real life, and then I'm gonna think about how I could maybe change that to make it abstract. People are gonna know this is a hippo by the outline and the shapes that they see. So it's okay if I use as many wonderful colors as I want. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and pick just a couple colors off of my tabletop and have them laying out. Now, in the middle of the room, there's a bucket with some extra crayons. So if for some reason you can't find uh, a crayon at your desk in your, in your container, then you can raise your hand and one at a time, go to the green bucket on the middle table and you can uh, find some, some colors there. Once you find a color, you wanna keep it at your spot. You don't need to return it to the big bucket. So first thing I'm gonna do, I want to add some pattern to my mask. So. Before I start adding my pattern, I'm gonna just trace or outline my shapes. So first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is outline these ear shapes. I'm gonna start with those first. As you can see, I'm kind of turning my paper as I need to, as I go around. Now I could do the same color on my face or I can pick a different color and maybe do like a mixture. So remember, you can make these as bright and colorful as you want. When we're making patterns, we're using color, we're using lines, and we're using shapes to fill in our uh, patterned, our patterned mask. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and trace mine first and this is just gonna give me a nice bright border around my, my animal, all right? Once I've traced, now I can start thinking about what patterns I wanna add uh, to the different parts. So first, I'm going to uh, pick some more colors, and then I think what I'm gonna do is add some polka dots. Now, those are circles, so I'm going to draw some circles all over my mask and then come over here and do some over here. Again, you don't have to match what you're doing from side to side. It's your choice. I think before I'm done with that one, I'm going to go ahead and do another color. So I'm going to do another circle inside my circle. Now remember, in week two, we're going to be painting these masks in. So I want to leave some spaces where the paint can go. But that doesn't mean I can't fill it with lots of wonderful pattern with space in between. So I'm going to go ahead and add some stripes. So you can combine shapes, you can combine lines, and you can combine color. So really think about the variety or how many different patterns you can come up with. All right, so that part is almost, is, the ears are done. Now I'm gonna move on and look at my uh, face. All right, so some areas you might wanna fill in. So I might fill these little dots in that are, that are usually on the hippo's nose, but I'm not gonna fill in the whole mask because if I fill the whole mask in with crayon, then there'll be nowhere for my paint to go. I think I'm gonna take another color and do like an extra circle around these. 
So again, this is becoming part of my pattern. The, the features that are on the mask are becoming part of my pattern. Hopefully you are coming up with some pretty amazing designs or patterns of your own. Remember, you can choose your favorite colors or you can pick, you can pick any colors. The more colorful, the more abstract these are going to be and the better they'll look. All right, so again, I'm tracing some of my lines, but now I need to think about what I want to fill the main portion of my hippo with. I could divide it up and do different patterns in different areas, or I could go ahead and I could go ahead and just make some like random shapes. I think I'm going to do that. I like this squiggle. So I'm going to go ahead and make them kind of all over. There we go. And I'm just going to keep going. By the end of today's class, you want to have as many areas of your mask filled as possible. So I've gotten pattern all over my mask. And I've left some areas white. I left some areas filled with color and pattern. Next class, we're going to get out our watercolor paint and we're going to fill the extra areas in. Now, if you are at home, you might be using crayon. You might be using crayon and marker. Or if you have watercolor paint, you might use watercolor paint once we get to part two. But for now, we're just working on the crayon area. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, I think I want the teeth to stay realistic looking. So I'm going to fill this with white. So if you want anything to stay white on your picture, you want to go ahead and fill it with white. And then when we paint, that will appear under the paint, under the watercolor. All right, so today, guys, go ahead and fill your animal mask with as many wonderful patterns as you can using lines, shapes, and colors. And then next class, we're going to go ahead and start painting. I can't wait to see what you guys create. I hope you have a great afternoon, and I'll see you later. Auf Wiedersehen.